I'm Pat. Welcome back to the channel. You're joining me today for part three of quilting the Nancy Rink Design Amish with a Twist Series 2. This was a kit that I picked up years ago, um, made the top, and then finally just now getting around to quilting it. So thanks for joining me. On today's video, I'm also going to introduce some different techniques in the second half for how I'm showing you what's done on the computer, as well as what's happening with the quilt itself. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you enjoy this episode. I'm working now on arranging the stitching designs that are going to go in the very center of the quilt. So as you had seen previously, the center has this star and then some darker background. So in the background, we're going to have some floral patterns. And then in the star itself, we're going to do a complicated design in the center. And then in the red points, some radiating lines that really accentuate uh, the points of the star. I'm using the morph tool to size and position the floral designs. But with this triangle shaped one, I'm also going to use points and lines just to create some visual guides on the computer that help me really know where it's going to fall relative to the seams that are in the quilt. For the corner designs, I'm going to use a quarter inch margin with the morph tool just to give a little bit of breathing space between the stitching and the edge of the block. However, because of the shape of this triangle feature, I need to use a half inch margin and then manually um, move the design up about a quarter inch so it's in line with the other designs. That will make sure there's enough space between the diagonal edges of this block and the stitching itself. Lastly, I'm going to move the sew head around the perimeter of the design and take a look at the quilt just to make sure everything's falling exactly where I want it to be. And then we can get ready to sew. Next, we're going to make the radiating lines in these red triangles, and I'm going to start by marking some guidelines at half inch increments around the perimeter of the center block. Now I'm going to use the laser to mark the points that are at the outer tips of these red triangles, as well as all of the uh, half inch increments that I marked with the ruler. I'm going to use these points to create the stitch pattern on the computer. Next I'll create the stitching pattern uh, by clicking a sequence of points and this creates a set of lines that the uh, computer will stitch for me. Right now I'm going to create these radiating lines on the top of the center as well as the left and right sides. I have to wait to do the bottom ones though until I advance the quilt a little further and I can have access to those triangles. I just need a quick thread color change to the red that we're using in this design and then I will be ready to sew. Before we stitch the red triangles, I'm going to put some pins into the unquilted center section that's right next to the red triangles just to keep things stable while we're sewing. These pins are handy quilter pins, which I recently discovered and I really like them. I found out about them through Valeria's Facebook group that focuses on quilting with Bernina longarm machines. I'll put a link to that group down below. If you are interested in long arming, especially on Bernina machines, I would highly encourage you to check that group out.
Okay, now we get to do my favorite part. We're going to put the stitching in in the very center of the quilt. I chose a somewhat complicated design here, and I really like the way that the layout interacts with the contrasting fabrics in the center block, especially the swirls. So I hope you agree and you like how it looks. Next, I'm going to continue stitching the floral background designs in the uh, blue section. And these are sized and positioned the same way that I showed you earlier for the ones along the top edge. My intent with doing floral designs in the background here, all facing inward towards the center, is to try to create the impression that the star is sitting in the flower patch. This is also a good time to take a look at how that center square stitching pattern interacts with the contrast of the fabrics in that center block, especially in the purple and the pink fabrics, and where the swirls fall. I really like how that looks. We also wind up with a nice arrangement of the leaf patterns in the corner blocks, as well as in the red and beige center. just getting things set up. Last time we got most of the way through this middle block, so we're gonna be ready to advance the quilt here. I don't think I can get to these uh, lower blocks here without moving it forward. So we have done everything we need to do um, before advancing the quilt and starting a new section. Okay, first thing we need to do is oil the bobbin hook. So we're going to bring the machine down here. This is a little tough with a king size quilt. You kind of have to work your way around. I'm going to move this quilt out of the way just enough so we can take the plate off. I'm going to pull the bottom case out. Kind of blow some of the lint out. And then this machine only needs oiling in one spot. And I do that before I start quilting for the day. That's it. So the plate goes back on. Um, bobbin goes back in. It's mostly full, so we won't run out too soon. And then we will be ready to get started. All right, to advance the quilt, first thing we're going to do is unclip these ends. And then we're going to release the bar that holds the back. And then I usually move the machine somewhere where I can get a sense of how far back I'm able to be able to sew. So I'll move it to the very back and I'll pull it forward a little bit. And then I'll make sure that the point I want to start sewing doesn't fall any further back than that. Roll this. And that gets us access to this section easily, which is where I want to be. And next thing we're going to do is pull up the bar that holds the top of the quilt and then move this up. Now we'll go through and make sure our batting is smooth underneath here, no bulges, no wrinkles. 
Um, and we're going to go and make sure that the cold itself is straight. start by doing the flowered sections and using the blue thread in the lower part of the center area here. So we'll start on the computer by getting those, uh, those sections set up. So I just get these roughly where I want them and then I'm going to use the morph tool to get them positioned exactly where I want them to be. So let's start with this lower left corner. Use the morph tool, we'll use the sew head, and just like I did on the top sections, I'm going to do a quarter inch uh, margin, and then now I'm going to set the points using the sew head. Okay, so I've marked the four corners of that block where I want the flowers to go, and the computer has adjusted it to fit within that area. And then I'm going to repeat that process for the bottom right corner. So now we're going to do this center one. Obviously, it's too large to fit the area right now. Um, but again, we're going to use the morph tool to get the size correct. And again, um, this one, we're actually going to use a, a half inch margin. And then I'm going to move it down by a quarter inch. Um, that accounts for the for the uh, triangular curves to fit the whole thing within the area that it needs to be in. When I did these other ones, I experimented with this a little bit, and I found that it was best to have it use a half inch margin, and then once the design is placed, move the whole thing down a quarter inch so it's in line with the other two. The markings here; these are this grid is at a uh, quarter inch markings. So I'm just going to by eye <clears throat> look at the bottom edge of this and move it down about a quarter inch. And then we're going to cue these three up for sewing in that order. This section of quilt that we're working on right now has a few different thread colors that we're going to need to use. Um, so since we just finished these three um, designs uh, and we've got this blue thread in the machine, we're going to continue on um, with this area and this area that has the feathers uh, because that uses the same color. So we'll get those done and then we'll get the border flowers done before we change to a different thread color. Okay, we are going to pick up with the um, feathers that go in this area. Um, so we already have the designs in there. So all we need to do is just use the morph tool now to make sure that we've got them um, positioned exactly where we need them to be. On these, I used a very small margin, 0.05, just so it wasn't right on the edge, but it gets pretty close up to the edge.
Okay, now that we have that block done, um, we're going to repeat the same process for the, uh, for, for the feather block on the other side, this one. So again, morph head, sorry, morphing tool, sew head, a margin of 0.05, and then let's locate the corners. Okay, the last uh, elements in this section that use the blue thread that we have loaded right now are the flowers in the border uh, over here and at the other side. So we're going to do those next. And I have actually found that it's easiest to just realign the uh, sewing head and safe area using a feature on the border itself rather than moving the border pieces around to match where it's aligned right now and that's really about it we don't have to do any alignment of this piece um, because we've realigned the whole frame of reference based on the border piece that we're attaching to Okay, since no quilt is perfectly square, what's happening on this end of the border is that this is actually coming out a little bit as it comes down. So I've taken the next design and, <clears throat> and I've rotated it a little bit so we don't get too close to the edge. Um, it will look visually aligned with this, but in reality it would be slightly rotated um, just to have it fit better in the space and maintain a, a more consistent spacing from the inner border. Next, I'm gonna work on filling in the rest of the star that's in red thread here. So we need to first make uh, these lines here in this triangle and in that triangle. So I did already mark last time in chalk half inch increments along this edge on the quilt. So I just need to use the laser to go ahead and create points from those. Okay, now that we got our points set, I'm just going to create the lines um, using those points. On all the lines except for the end ones, we are stitching back over the same path twice, but that's okay and it's better than stopping and starting uh, this many times. This is the same method that we used to create the cross hatching in the block with all the squares. All right, thanks for joining me for part three of Amish with a Twist. It was great to get to work on the center section, so I hope you enjoyed that. 
and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode where we're going to dive into the rest of this quilt. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if there's anything specific you'd like to know more about. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next one.